guys the girlfriend made scary. We're gonna watch some tech stuff, baby. I actually believe. OnePlus has just confirmed the official announcement date for the OnePlus 8 series. And with around two weeks to go to that date, we pretty much already know everything there is to know. What's up guys, Saf here on Super Saf TV. And in this video, we're gonna break down all the leaks and rumors, Super Saf style. So firstly, it does look like we're gonna have at least two OnePlus devices, the OnePlus 8 as well as the OnePlus 8 Pro. There's also some rumors that there may be a OnePlus 8 Lite, but we don't know too much about that device as yet. But we do know quite a bit about the 8 and the 8 Pro. And initially, if we look at the front of the devices from all the leaks and rumors that we see, they do look pretty much exactly the same as the Oppo Find X2 series. So we've got Turn it up. Delays, minimal bezels with a punch out towards left hand side now this is kind of expected because oppo is a sister company for oneplus and we've there seen this go. many times before where Turned oppo announces something new and then those features eventually do trickle down to the oneplus series and this is not necessarily a bad thing because the find x2 pro currently has one of the best displays in the market so the OnePlus 8 Pro is gonna have a 6.78 inch display. This is what OnePlus are gonna be calling a super fluid AMOLED display. And that is because it's gonna have a 120 Hertz refresh rate with a Quad HD plus resolution. Now, Damn. having used the Find X2 Pro for the better part of last month, I can tell you that this is a really- Entire really video of yours? It's very smooth. It's very sharp. The colors are great. There's only like a minute left on while I watched it. So I'm personally not disappointed that this is making its way to the OnePlus. Are you talking about the one from earlier? Now, the OnePlus 8, although it's going to look very similar from the front, it's going to be a 6.55 inch fluid AMOLED display. It's going to have a full HD plus resolution with a 90 hertz refresh rate. So still a high refresh rate but not quite on the level you know what? of the OnePlus 8 Pro. And both devices are also going to have my phone an full refresh. optical fingerprint scanner like we've seen from OnePlus before. Now, some of you guys may be disappointed that we have a punch out now and not a pop-up camera, giving the full screen experience that we saw on the OnePlus 7 Pro as well as the OnePlus 7T Pro. But it looks like OnePlus may be doing this because the OnePlus 8 Pro at least is going to have an official IP68 water and dust resistant rating. Now having mechanical moving parts does make getting an official IP rating difficult. So this may be one of the reasons why they've done this. I'm not too sure. What do you guys think about the punch up? Is it something that you don't mind or would you have preferred a pop? Go from the beginning? Video? Didn't I watch it from the beginning? Now, although the OnePlus 8 Pro is going to have that Didn't official I? IP rating, the OnePlus 8 is not going to have that official IP rating. So it's still probably going to be pretty water and dust resistant, except it's just not going to have that rating to keep that price lower. Now this takes us on to the build and design. So both devices do have curved glass from the front and curved glass from the back as well with a metal frame. And from the back, realistically speaking, these do look quite similar to what we had on the OnePlus 7 Pro last year. So we do have a center camera module on both devices, and we are also gonna be getting a few new colors. So on the OnePlus 8 Pro, there's gonna be a black, a blue, as well as a green. With the OnePlus 8, there's gonna be a black also, a green, as well as a glow color, which is a bit of a multi-color, similar to what we've seen on the Note 10. I'm not ready for Walking Dead this yet. This is gonna have more of a matte finish compared to that glossy finish on the Note 10. Now let's talk a little bit about- Those other cameras. two links, are those so tech vids? The OnePlus 8 Pro is gonna have a quad camera setup, whereas the OnePlus 8 is gonna have a triple camera setup. Now let's initially talk about the OnePlus 8 Pro because uh, this is where the cameras have taken a bit of a leap forward and some of the cameras are once again quite similar to the Find X2 Pro. So the primary camera is a 48 megapixel camera. It's Sony's new IMX689 sensor with an f1.8 aperture. It's quite a large sensor size. And this time around, the ultra wide camera is also 48 megapixels. It's got an f2.2 aperture and it's using Sony's IMX586 sensor. 
What's interesting is that this is the sensor that was used in the primary camera of the last year's OnePlus devices. So this is now being used for the ultra wide camera. So definitely a welcome improvement here. Now with both of these cameras, although they are 48 megapixels, you are gonna be using pixel binning and you will be shooting at around 12 megapixels on a general basis. And for the third camera on the 8 Pro, it is gonna be a telephoto camera with eight megapixels. And this is gonna give three times optical zoom and up to 30 times the digital zoom. So it's not gonna be on the level of the periscope zoom that we've got on the Find X2 Pro. And finally, the fourth camera is quite interesting because this is a five megapixel color filter camera. Now, what it's exactly gonna do, I'm not too sure at this point in time, but we have heard rumored that there are gonna be some new features such as a new night portrait mode, three HDR video, as well as cinematic effects. So I'm assuming this new camera is gonna help towards some of these new features. Now for the OnePlus 8, you're not gonna be getting cameras quite at the level of the OnePlus 8 Pro. So you're gonna have a primary 48 megapixel camera there's also a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera. It's a yes there, I'm not checking. Your brain all over the place. Sensor. Both devices are gonna have a 16 megapixel front facing camera. And speaking of the performance, the internals, you'll be pleased to know that both of these are gonna be powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 chipset along with the X55 modem to enable 5G. And for storage, both devices are gonna be available in either 128 or 256 with buy options with UFS 3.0 storage. So this is gonna be super fast. Now for the RAM, they're both gonna be available in either eight or 12 gigabytes of RAM, but the OnePlus 8 Pro is gonna have faster LPDDR5 RAM. For the software, as expected, Android 10 with Oxygen OS on top. OnePlus devices, in my experience, some of the fastest devices out there. So I've got no doubt that this is also gonna carry on here on the new OnePlus devices. For the speakers, both are gonna have stereo speakers, so there's gonna be one bottom firing as well as one in the earpiece. And for the batteries, the OnePlus 8 Pro is gonna come in with a larger 4,510 milliamp hour battery versus the 4,300 milliamp hour battery on the OnePlus 8. Uh. Both devices are gonna support OnePlus's 30 watt warp charge, so this is very, very fast Whoa. charging. It's not quite on the level from Oppo with their 65 watt Superbook 2.0. But what's interesting is that the OnePlus 8 Pro, finally, for the first time on a OnePlus device, is gonna have wireless charging. And what's even more exciting is that this is gonna be 30 watt wireless charging. So it's gonna be very, very fast. Now, OnePlus have traditionally said that the reason they've not gone with wireless charging is because it's just not gonna be on the same speed. My baby Mikey. Wide charging, but uh, I was eating my dinner videos. and uh, of course no one wants to see me eat, so we watch videos while we eat. Exciting. Basically it's tech time. Do miss whenever I'm using a one What's up device. Mikey? There's also gonna be wireless power share, so being able to reverse wireless charge using the OnePlus 8 Pro, although this is gonna be pretty slow at just three watts. This also indicates to me that OnePlus are likely to be introducing some wireless earbuds that you can wirelessly charge on the OnePlus 8 Pro. Again, this is just me guessing, but it seems to be quite likely. The OnePlus 8, however, is not gonna be getting wireless charging, unfortunately. Now, what about pricing and availability? So with these new features and the official IP rating and things like that, the price is of course gonna be higher compared to what we had last year. There's no real definitive pricing out as yet, but I'd expect the OnePlus 8 Pro to come in at around 800 to 850 pounds maybe. This would put it more in line with some of the flagships that it's competing with. And the OnePlus 8, I would predict, will be coming in at around 650 pounds. That's my guess based on the features that it's coming with and comparing- I don't want a phone that can't wire the charge. In terms of availability, they are- The homie to Darth. Ship what is up? Uh, maybe a you said ouch, what you talking about the phone? The phone prices? Date, which is on the 14th. I can't pay that much for a phone that- and of course, uh, as soon as the announcement- I will not made, pay I'm that much for a phone that can't wire the charge. The channel, uh, I'm fixing a little bit of food about to so crash since I gotta get up early, my baby. What you, what you doing tomorrow? Any of that content. What do you guys think of the OnePlus? Yeah, that price is, eh. Alright, let's get another video. Leaks and rumors. 
definitely let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hey, what's up, guys? Everything Apple Pro here. It has been an insane week of Apple leaks. Just when I think I'm getting on top of the news, even more come out. So I apologize about the delay behind this video, but we took our time to craft our renders, and I hope you like our best yet. Okay, so let's get into it. The iPhone 12 Pro design has leaked. This is it, its final form, confirmed by multiple sources, Max Weinbach, John Prosser, several other sources I have do confirm that this is legit. So this leak originated from an iOS 14 early build from Concept iPhone and then later by Fudge, a Twitter leaker, and it has been confirmed by multiple sources to be correct. Apple is in the final stages of prototyping and this is an instruction manual for the upcoming iPhone depicting that new LiDAR sensor and how Apple will be equipping their upcoming 2020 iPhone lineup with this sensor. So I just wanted to say we weren't too far off. The only difference between our concept was the LiDAR sensor is even larger than that of the iPad Pro, which is not surprising. Apple wants their iPhones to be the most capable. And considering the iPad Pro lenses themselves are smaller, it makes well, sense that the LiDAR sensor on the I'm iPad Pro would also be smaller. Essential. I say it looks cool. I mean, only logically that work. Apple would move forward in this direction. And the center home. flash was correct. Even the microphone mounted in between the lenses on the bottom was correct, Shouldn't surprisingly. Be and I wouldn't even be surprised if this is how it does look on See, the inside mean... based on the new iPad hey, Pro no attention to me. Just camera pay attention housing, to the video. that this one would look very similar you know, with the 3D the time of flight on the bottom right. It's hard to tell if this graphic confirms a boxy design, the iPhone 4-like design that Ming-Chi Kuo confirmed for this year's iPhones as it is a 2D image but I would I'm like here, to think that it does. In a separate report today, John Prosser fun. confirmed that Apple is very close to the finalization of their iPhone 12 lineup. He shared this graphic with the details inside. So the lower end 5.4 inch and 6.1 inch iPhones will be aluminum based. The larger 6.1 and 6.7 inch iPhone 12 Pro models will remain stainless aluminum steel. Based. All will have a smaller notch, and by the way, the notch you're seeing in our concepts, this is based on the earlier iPhone 11 Pro leak from January 15th, which was one of the ones Apple was considering. It had this exact same notch there. So it's the most accurate look at what a notch could look like if Apple were to make it smaller, which John Prosser is saying Apple will be doing. As earlier predicted, only the high-end 6.1 and 6.7 inch 12 Pros will have the additional LiDAR sensor and three cameras. The two lower end models will not have three cameras and a LiDAR sensor only dual lenses. I personally wouldn't even be surprised if Apple kept a rounded design on the lower end 5.4 and 6.1 inch iPhones and introduced that steely boxy look for the 6.1 and 6.7 inch. That would be a pretty cool way to differentiate a pro and non-pro device. And John confirms that we might be seeing the final CADs within one to two months here. That's very exciting. We did get those around May, June for the iPhone 11 Pro and all the case makers can start working directly off of those CADs. And speaking of CADs, wanted to share our latest graphics with you. We just filed our second design patent for our lock mount magnet system. Honestly, so exciting seeing the entire process and Not how it looks yet. making the graphics. Boy, Very ass. excited about the future of the ecosystem and magnetic products in our one. case. For everyone that pre-ordered, we're making good headway, but as you know, we pushed our launch frame up into May due to the COVID-19 outbreak. So stay tuned for updates on that. And Prosser mentions that because Apple is done with the prototyping, they're only about two months behind on release. So we'll be seeing a staggered release likely October, oh November. Oh my goodness, but it should dude. still like, happen this year for the iPhone 12 series. Kind of and a few other up. leaks from the Fudge Twitter leaker. He says that the Apple A14 chip codename is Firestorm. Pretty cool sounding, not what it'll be called, just the development name. And Fudge confirms that B389 is indeed an AirTag placeholder development name. Shared this screenshot with us. So he does have access to the iOS 14 leaked build, adding even more credence to the fact that that leak of the iPhone 12 Pro was correct. And 9 to 5 Mac has published an exclusive iPhone SE report, which I must say take with a grain of salt as a certain aspect of it was not right. And that was the release time frame. They said that would happen on Friday. The iPhone SE did not release on Friday. And of course the naming they did confirm would be the iPhone SE 2020. 
and not iPhone 9 that we've been hearing. I honestly like the idea of Apple relinquishing iPhone SE and then 2020 would be the moniker explaining the iPhone SE from the older version. And 9 to 5 Mac confirms that we'll be seeing three colors for this new iPhone SE, one being product red. Did my mic really? The idea of if Apple were to theme this as the Is iPhone my mic on? style product red, the iPhone SE 2020 would look incredible. Glossy, nice black elements. I would love to see something like this. And considering it's being based on the iPhone 8, I'm sure that Apple could do something similar. I just hope they keep a black front and not a white screen. Other colors include white and Is my mic on? And 9 to 5 there we go. The I think it's picking sizes, up now. Which would be 64. Dude, this mic is just, oh, this mic is 56. so bad. 9 to 5 Mac does not know the pricing for this upcoming iPhone SE. Earlier, we heard $399 starting price. This mic is so bad. It's got to go. It'll be somewhere it's around the $400 go. mark. Now, 9 to 5 Mac does not I'm know really not trying to go date. buy another it's mic when there's a mic coming out that I want, but I don't think I can do this shit anymore, man. This mic, is, of this, month this mic is just bad, dude. On the 22nd. And there have been a ton of listings all around Virgin Mobile, Verizon, even on the official Apple site, we saw a couple listings, one for a screen protector that directly references the iPhone SE and an Apple Care listing. So we know it's happening imminently, possibly on the 14th or 15th of this month. Okay, and some juicy iOS 14 leaks. This is coming from Dongle Book Pro, a leaker known to Max Weinbach, and he shared the wallpaper interface for iOS 14. It looks incredible. So Apple is making several changes in the wallpaper area of iOS 14. First off, they're starting new wallpaper collections where they'll be grouping wallpapers in certain categories such as earth and moon, flowers, and classic stripes. Users will be able to scroll through those collections to find wallpapers easier. Also, there's a new gradient option. So Apple is including some sort of default gradients in iOS 14. Awesome. And it appears that Apple is finally giving you some sort of flexibility in customization of the home screen, similar to that, the way you would customize your Apple Watch with a feature called home screen appearance. 9 to 5 Mac is reporting on this that it would theoretically allow you to add widgets, which you can then move around and interact with. I wonder how similar it would be to the jailbreak tweak iOS blocks. A longtime favorite, honestly, very intuitive. You'd be able to pinch and zoom certain widgets. But apparently Apple will be That's doing cool. something with the widgets on the home screen in iOS 14. Could this be the year we finally see some major changes to the home screen? Probably not. Earlier, John Prosser regarding WWDC did say we're likely to see several slated releases, one for the Apple over-ear headphones. And by the way, Max Weinbach in a separate report is saying Apple was originally aiming for a $300 price tag for these headphones, but because of the outbreak and the production issues, they were forced to raise it from between $320 to $360. So I'm guessing we'll see a $349 price tag on those. And Prosser confirms AirTags are slated for WWDC. He also mentions that we'll be seeing a refresh for the 13-inch MacBook Pro. He speculates that it's very possible we could see a 14 inch display on this new MacBook Pro, but at the very least, it'll be a spec bump featuring Intel's latest 10th generation processors. And speaking of, Intel has just announced its new 10th generation Intel processors. They say it's the fastest mobile processor in the world, exceeding the 5 gigahertz boost speed to 5.3 gigahertz. It's a very minor spec bump. I'm just glad that Apple will finally be adding Wi-Fi 6 to their flagship MacBook. I'd also like this to be Apple's last Intel processor in their flagship MacBook before their own ARM processor, which is rumored for later this year or early next year. And regarding AirTags, Apple had a little oopsie as someone uploaded a video on their support channel directly referencing AirTags in that video. Apple quickly removed that and that basically confirms AirTags is the official name. I don't know if any of you remember this, but last year, Max Weinbach reported that Apple is working on iPhones that work underwater and with rain or just liquid on the display in general. Now a new patent application details that yes, Apple is still pursuing this and not only are they working on an iPhone that works underwater, they want it to work even better with a custom interface. Apparently Apple is designing some sort of wet mode or underwater mode where you'll be able to take your iPhone underwater, operate it and have an entirely new interface that is simpler and easier to use, especially considering the fact that you're underwater, you don't wanna be fumbling with all these little controls. It'll be using vibrations and an easier interface 
to make your life easier. As someone that lives in the Pacific Northwest, this is a very welcome feature for me. I'd love to see an iPhone that doesn't freak out with just a little bit of rain on it. Even in this day and age, there are still some scary bugs being found on the iPhone. One being an exploit that gained access to the camera on the iPhone using seven exploits daisy chained together and Apple paid out $75,000 to get it. It's scary that it only costs that much money to theoretically gain control of someone's camera had he sold this exploit to the wrong hands. Also, there's a bug with FaceTime where people that have updated to 13.4 can't communicate with older devices on iOS 9.3.5 or 9.3.6. This is for the 4S and certain iPads. Unclear why this is, but in times like this with a pandemic, it's scary that some people can't communicate with their loved ones. And regarding the status of Apple stores, it's possible they'll be reopened early May. I think it's wishful thinking, but that's what Apple is tentatively planning. All right, and this is the winner of the Galaxy S20 Ultra giveaway. Thank you for participating. I'll have a four iPhone 11 Pro giveaway here soon to commemorate the launch of our case. Finally, a year and a half later, thanks for sticking with us, guys. I'll be keeping you updated. Peace. Okay, well, great little source of uh, tech time, but now it's back to the game. Got to see more transitions mastered in a different way. That's one thing I can say about that. But I do love what I'm seeing. Um, for your link, this is the link that Welcome you sent me a while ago. Back to Pro versus Pro so. Gaming. You guys really seem to enjoy the last episode. So this time we're taking it to the gaming PC room. And my dumbass got forgot you. the full screen. Here, so. hold, hold the camera. All right, let's go. Let's go. What are you doing, Ken? Let's go. Okay, so we are here at Micro Center to build the Pro versus Broke Gaming PCs. What is the budget this time? So this is a better time than ever to point out that this video is brought to you by Micro Center. Specifically, my part of the video where I get to buy all the stuff with an unlimited budget, thanks to our sponsor of today's video, Are you serious right now? You're a sellout now. I'm fine, but you're the sellout. Look, I'm not a sellout. I'm just here to let you know that this is one of Micro Center's 25 oh, locations. You said, wait, Tustin, California. this is the and video that you sent me originally. Link, to any of the items that but I, I was very intrigued today. to see they'll this. be in the description or feel free to visit your local I was at the wrong yeah, you sent this exactly a while like ago Ken, to get a secret sponsor not tell me and of course that sponsor benefit yeah I want to see this one I didn't get to see this me. I mean I shouldn't be surprised I feel like he has a lot of sponsors in mystery tech I'm just not aware of. Oh, what do you video is brought to you by Micro Center go to Micro Center for all of your PC needs okay so all good PC builds especially ones that have unlimited budget start with the PC case of course because this is the thing that everyone sees and it's a thing that the signifies thing you that you about, are pro you, you care about aesthetics not actual I do performance. oh wait this is a this is a, a standing desk with a PC in it we're not trying to fix <laughs> the office. that's fucking dope no I want that no this check for that I, I want to watch no. this one though no we, we can watch oh the next God, video soon I, I want to watch this oh my god it has the water cooling on the front are you literally just gonna buy a pre-built right now I mean, it's not against the rules, right? Let me go see if there's uh, someone that can I mean, like, help us here. Wait. <laughs> oh, no. Ah. Dude, are you serious right now? That's dope. I've always wanted a crazy RGB water cool PC, and that that's pretty crazy RGB. That's is that a, a main gear? That is a main gear PC, actually. Cool. Oh no, is there, oh, there's a remote for it. So it has Core i9-9900K, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, and uh, 2080 Ti with 20 11 gigs. Yeah, 11 gigs of VRAM. And this PC is running the best operating system for gaming, Windows 10, which is available in the link in the description below at microcenter.com. This thing looks awesome. I have to do literally no work. I'm also paying for labor, but that's okay. I don't have to pay for it myself because the gracious sponsor of today's video, Micro Center, is doing it for me. I will be taking uh, this one because it doesn't look like it is here. Are you gonna take the display model right now? I will take the display model. It, it, it's cheaper. It's cheaper. I know you like that. I know you like that. I actually tell you how expensive it'll be. Ooh. Are you getting a discount literally as we speak right now? Look at Micro Center. Is he a shirt? Did you just say he looks cooler? <laughs> I love Micro Center even more now. Their employees know what's up. By the way, Austin, the uh, Apple sections. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't make that up even if we wanted to. So while Ken might decide to go and buy some pre-built water cool computer, I am going to do it the old-fashioned way 
and build it myself. I mean, I'm working with less but than that, 10 of what built. Ken has, right? I mean, he has more money in his water cooling than I have for my entire setup. So one of my thoughts is I can go with like integrated graphics and go super cheap, or I could cut all the corners and try to squeeze the cheapest graphics card I can. Hey dude. Just want to say hi. Oh, thanks man, appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, we're just shooting a video right now, as you can probably yeah. see. <laughs> awesome, mate. Have, have a good one. It's already awesome. Oh. Because you said budget, I went ahead and grabbed Why would you do <laughs> What are you doing to me, man? It's an open box. It's an open box for what? It's $700. You're right, you're right. So let's okay. scale it down a little. Ah, <laughs> this guy, this guy right here. One of the legit advantages of going to a store like Micro Center is that I it's like not these guys. As as, like, I've never watched them. This brand but this is my first right? time. I'm trying it's like, to I gotta subscribe. Open my baby Dr. Taylor, what's up? The bundle deals. I'm trying to take advantage of the, the dusty thing they've got in the back that they've totally forgot about. Like, whatever I can do to save a few dollars and make my system remotely gameable, game, game, gamified. Game, game malicious, game metastrophe. <laughs> I need to game on a very small budget. This is a very explosive value, you might one say. Right, Austin? Look, usually it's a good idea to get a very nice power supply that will work for years and years to come and give you excellent reliability. And sometimes I'm trying to be Ken and I need a 400 watt power supply. <laughs> Look, sometimes in life, you do as I say, not as I do. That's it, my that friend. Right Thank you so much. I would shake your hand, but that's all right. I'm, I'm going to do it very carefully. Off. Okay, we're going to do this. Thank you for the help. Of I'm course. going to go and be victorious in my gaming Please exploits. <clears throat> <clears throat> all right, so it is time to build my Micro Center PC. Now, I see that you're already set up here. I am. Like how much work that took you. It was very That puppy laborious. is beautiful. Oh, yeah. It's so hard to plug in the power cable. Dude, Press this thing RGB is button. this thing is not light at all. I need oh, to. Oh, boo hoo! You had to pick up your thirty thousand dollar PC. No, Matt had to, but that's fine. <laughs> you didn't do it yourself. So a bunch of y'all complained last time that I didn't have a mouse pad, and the sponsor of today's video, Micro Center, just so happened to pay for everything, and they also let me get a HyperX Fury S. Did that come out of my budget? Probably. It's on my receipt. Yeah. We're done. <laughs> That's, yeah. Pro gamer right here, ladies and gentlemen. What are you doing? That's gonna bother Building me so bad. Building my GPU mining case. There's a lot of components wow. in here. Wow. That, that cool. looks like a lot of work. So my graphics card Ow. should go something like here. Yes. However, my motherboard, down here. Because I believe as a mining card, this is meant to be used with Risers, something that I did not think ahead about. Hmm. Team Poverty not looking great today. So I'm just going to take this. <laughs> Said Team Poverty. I'm just put it. <laughs> no. Shit. No. Okay, well, if I you're need not, not, not going to put it next to the fire extinguisher, then I'm going to take the fire extinguisher to you. Look, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Look, I'm just trying to be a good friend. It's happened once before. I'm out for him. Like, I know it's it's kind of a competition. I gotta keep it friendly. And I care about his business. And I need to make sure that fires don't happen on my watch. <laughs> Look, I wasn't hired back then, so I mean. <laughs> Ken, with all the fun you've been making on my PC, you missed the best part, my power cable. There we go, see? Power cable. That's, all the <laughs> That's my power button right there. Or as I like to call it, a detonator. No! My power cable. All right, you know what? So I think my broke setup is about done. As you can see, we have our processor, our memory, motherboard, graphics card, SSD, power supply, as well as our case, all set up, nicely cable managed, and ready for some gaming action. Oh. Hey, it works! I don't know what, what? Wait, here, take this, take this, take this, take this. <laughs> my graphics card is spinning, my CPU is spinning. <laughs> Jesus. It's fine. Look, once I know this works, I will actually try to clean some cables. My power supply is power supplying, and have I posted? Nope, I want DVI, I want DVI, give me DVI. Uh, okay, I'm gonna need to do some testing. But hey, this is a good sign. There's signs of life. My fans are spinning. My USB peripherals are USBing. I'm sure I can figure this out by tomorrow when we do the actual test off. 
we've been here for like an hour and a half. No, we're, we're doing it tomorrow. It's fine. Okay. So after some minor alterations to my computer, it is fully functional with some wonderful LTT store. Oh wait, sorry, no, <clears throat> wrong channel. Some 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 generic brand cable ties to make sure that it is all perfectly functional, perfectly wonderful. Look, it is it's, very it's, less bomb-like. Look, it's fine. Don't mind the thing. That shit wiring. does look like a bomb. Don't mind the fact that uh, I don't have enough space to install games, so I might be using an external. What are you doing? That's. You just turned off. My... It's on my side of the table. So... I just had all, I had all my game set up. I was already. <laughs> You're a dick, man. <laughs> There's a power button. Like, how could I not press it? Blood. Blood. Last episode, we I took a look that. at the peripherals. So monitor, mouse, keyboard, headset. And I pretty much showed the world that you don't need to be Ken Bolito and spend a giant pile of money on all your accessories. So I think it only seems fair that because we are doing the game PC edition this time, we're going to use all of those same peripherals. Except that Ken forgot to bring his headset and I have already used my monitor for something else. So I'm seeing a downgrade and he's seeing an update. Yo, sis, I'm liking Again, this, bro. Story of my life. Ken cheats. I'm really liking the this. end of it. It's fine. We have a full group of easy bots. I'm not cheating. My team's not better or anything. Now, let's, uh, let's play, shall we? So in my great need yeah, of I'm going to check out the last episode. Sorry I'm yawning. Y'all hear you guys too. And it is doing great for needs. What it is not doing well for is recording, which is why even though I'm getting a very smooth, incredibly buttery frame rate, uh, the recording's like 10 FPS. That's fine. He's got a graphic card with like shadow play and all this kind of stuff. I'm doing it the old fashioned way using OBS. So, you know, CPU encoding is great. AKA, my footage looks better in real life. Don't mind this terrible recording. All right, here we go. Here we go. You have no chance, my friend, no chance. No chance, eh? Bye, also. Ah! <laughs> Run faster. Run yeah. faster. No. Look at all of those kills. <laughs> ah. Hey, guys, this is Austin. Hey, guys, I'm running away from Ken. No, I'm not. <laughs> what? <laughs> Couldn't run away fast enough. This is enough. bad. I don't like this at all. <laughs> all oh, right, let's no. go play the objective. Yeah. There we go. Got one. Got one. It looks so oh, laggy. <laughs> I'm almost dead. I'm almost dead. Ha 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 ha! Not if you can find me though, but. Look at that excellent objective defense. What a great amount of teamwork for me and my AI buddies. Where oh are you? Oh god, I'm not telling you. Oh, I see you, I see you, I see you. Ah! <laughs> what was that? <laughs> oh man, so much is happening right now. <laughs> this is such a mess with all these like easy AIs. Like everyone, literally everyone sucks. All right, Roadhog, Roadhog, Roadhog ah. next. Roadhog next, yeah! Ah. <laughs> Come ah. on, come on, ah, go! Lucio, Lucio! The f***ing bastion. The f***ing bastion. You mother... <laughs> You're raging over there, Ken? Uh, 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 no! You updated Fortnite. Oh, no! No! GG and I good I was luck. so close! It was Victory update for day. Team Austin and the cheap setup. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Play the game, though. Play the game. My name's so Ken, bad. I can play the game. My bot team was awful. I carried everyone. Carried a 1v1 on CSGO? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I am running at a super smooth 78 frames per second right now at 1080p. Okay. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> oh God. Already? This is Already. bad. Already? <laughs> this is bad. I don't like this. Ha, ha, ha. I'm just going to stay there here. There we go. Two. Oh. <laughs> oh, rip. That's rip. Bad. Three. Don't like this. It was this. a three piece. Oh my god, this terrible display. <laughs> this terrible display. Oh god. No, 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 no. 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 I was not ready. I was not ready. <laughs> I mean, it took me like 30 shots to get you, but it's fine. I count. Oh man. Someone's about to spawn in. I'm literally going to shoot them in the back of the face. Oh. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Not, not the case. Are you gonna get swept right now? Am I gonna beat you in both games right now? Is that, is that, what that, that's kind of seems like a, oh. One. Okay. Oh, that was a two piece. Cool. <laughs> I did not even realize. No, that is Austin. That is Austin. Oh! 
Oh, there's Boston! <laughs> no. I guess it's a setup, like, I'm but, trying to compete uh, for kills with my, uh, yeah, I hate those kind of people. Yeah. Don't buy expensive oh, shit. Okay, they're bots. They're fine. If you oh. can't play. I mean, oh, you don't, me. you don't oh, always, God, my whole thing my about it, you don't always have to buy You're expensive to stuff. The world, there's people sure, that build whatever, minimal but... setups and budget setups. Like, you don't always have to go expensive. I'm almost in last place right now. This is not good. I've died a lot of Like, when I was younger, I had to, I had to do things a specific way. I was right, buying yeah. my own. <laughs> Wasn't no one else gonna buy it for me. What is up? It sucked. Mm. So what have we learned today? Nobody won. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Pro vs. Broke Gaming. And I really enjoyed top. this. No. Uh, you're gonna break your headphones. My computer will chew them up and spit them out. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Pro vs. Broke Gaming. And of course, let us know who won. I really enjoyed that. Hey guys and welcome back to Battlefront Update. Today I wanted to show off yet another awesome product from Elgato Gaming, the Multimount. As most of you probably know, they've been a sponsor here on the channel and helped out a ton for the last couple of years. And have come out with so many great products that I currently use in my setup, such as capture cards, stream decks, studio lights, green screens and camera equipment. At the moment they're pretty much making up at least half of my equipment in my setup. And they tend to always release products that you didn't really know you needed until you saw the announcement and you're like, oh, I really want that and the multi mount is just like that the multi mount is basically a mount for your equipment that is super versatile compared to normal mounts and you can use it for microphones cameras lights and really anything you need there's different parts to the mount and the base mount is the same as the one that comes with the key light that you clamp onto the side of your desk and you can then adjust the height on it but if you then add the flex arm kit to it, you can twist and turn the mount in any direction you want, making it so much more useful than any conventional mounts. And the flex arm kit is also what made this so helpful for me, because previously I haven't found any mount that could fit my camera into my fairly crammed and weird setup, as my camera doesn't sit directly over a flat surface, but is instead in between my two main monitors. As you can see, setting up the actual mount is extremely easy and takes no more than a few minutes. I'm just and wondering if that's going to fit on my desk so I have to buy the you want to piece. attach to the mount. Apologies for the slightly worse footage here, but I realized that if I wanted to show my camera on the mount, I need to actually put it on the mount and then film with my GoPro instead. But as you can see, the flex arm means you can film in any direction you want, including if you want to make like an unboxing or board game video and put the camera straight on top of the table, pointing downwards. Elgato also sent me the weighted plate base, which means you can put the stand anywhere you want, no matter if you have a desk or just want to put it anywhere where it doesn't fit with a desk clamp. I'm gonna be honest and say that the reason to why I asked them to send me the weighted base was because I didn't think it would work with a desk clamp and then flex arm to reach uh, my camera position, but it turns out it did, so I didn't have to use the weighted base for this particular part of my setup. I know my cable management is horrible, but here you can see how the flex arm was able to reach in between my my two monitors That's and dope. place the camera perfectly in the middle. Something that I haven't found any other mount that was actually able to do. Lastly, they do also have a smartphone holder that you can switch out the ball head for if you want to use the mount to film with your phone or similarly, but since I don't really use my phone that way, I didn't ask for one of those. But they've got some great examples on their website of how people have used the multi-mount, so I'd recommend checking that out in the description below if you're interested in reading more about the product, or any product for that matter. I do also have a nice little partner page where I've listed all the products that I use in my setup, so if you're interested in that, that will be through the same link in the description below. But that's really all. Okay, Hello again, I am Blunty. Now, it's no secret I'm a big fan of Elgato gear. I use a lot of it. I've got their lights. What happens is we've been about? recording at the desk and streaming and stuff. I use the Elgato cam cap to use a real camera as a web camera, so I get really nice quality while streaming and things like that. I've got the Elgato capture card. I've got a few Elgato stream decks, which I love. Don't want to ever be without them. Uh, and more recently, when I was reviewing the lights, I talked about this, which is their kind of little desk clampy pole thing that they sold with their lights so you can clamp your lights to your desk and use them really easily without having to have you know floor standing light stands and things like that which take up a bunch of rooms and things like that and when I talked about this portion of the light review I said well my baby Dr. Taylor here. you're back I already and said I what's up baby separately so I can buy a few of them because they've got more uses for them all around the place because you can have cameras to them or microphones so I enjoy the walk sort of and did it from last night it was okay uh, bookshelf things got here and sort of hang a rod between them and hang a green screen 
uh, that's bigger than the sort of, oh, I've got the Elgato green screen too, but sometimes I need a bigger green screen. Point is, I, I loved this as a thing. Like some ball heads tended. I just want to see so very how deep the clamp goes. And that, it's a little even more flexible than that because again, this is just sort of two links, whereas you got a small cap. Uh, it's got two quarter 20 screws, one on the bottom, one on. Hi everyone, it's the English Simmer here. Video. I'm just with the flex arms to make it longer and then use that for my camera but I decided just to use the clamp instead so that I have the weighted base to actually maneuver around the house if I want to do some other videos. The flex arm kit is also a super important part of this whole rig. I personally don't think I would have bought the multi-mount by itself. These are all actually separate so you do have to buy them separately. It just sucks so that they're all separate dude. Do you like, want. I myself uh, wouldn't have bought the multi-mount by itself. I think what is really handy is the flex arm kit because you can use that to help reduce distance, which is currently what I'm doing with my setup. I have my multi-mount clamped to my desk and then I'm using one piece of the flex arm to actually reduce the distance between myself and my camera. And so that it which also is what I have sits to do. above my monitor quite nicely because I do have quite a wide Love desk. my boy you Kai streams and I'll flex arm kit to get some really cool angles if you are an artist or you do a lot of like top-down videos such as unboxings if i ever get to do unboxings again on my channel i know that my angles are about to be on point thanks to Elgato. The flex arm kit actually comes with four extensions, which is what helps you to create those angles. So there is one 24 centimeter okay, so extension. Okay, so four extensions. There's one 17 centimeter My reactor to links. And then there are two uh, I just watched some stuff that I was behind on, that's all. You do have to use I'm ready your creativity to start gaming a little here in a bit, but it's also kind of in the fun because it's kind of like piecing together a jigsaw. And I know it's a weird flex, but this kit is awesome. When it comes to the weighted base, you can actually remove the clamp from the bottom of the multi-mount. This is a little bit fiddly. I will hold my hands up and say I did struggle with this, but that's probably because I'm a useless bisexual that, and I'm used to making IKEA furniture. And that looks like with Elgato products. So that it looks like it will, uh, will fit my desk. My desk is really deep. The so. base. But you are provided with the screws that you need and also the Allen keys, so you don't need to go out and like purchase those. Those will come in the box with the weighted base also just a warning this is super heavy obviously if you want it holding dslrs and ring lights clearly you want it to be a hefty product so it's not going to tip over and i can assure you yeah that looks like it'll really clamp onto this desk this desk is deep so i'm really wanting to make sure that i don't have to I buy that weighted base he was like, like i don't do want, you want to, to carry it in my homie says like, redeems tech time okay, aye, aye, aye. Aye. thanks I didn't want to watch another tech video, but okay, it was a man. It lot heavier than I was expecting it to be. So as I said, you can either stand this weighted base behind your desk and use the multi-mount and the flex arm kit to create height and the angles that you want on your camera or any piece of equipment that you are going to use with this. However, I saw the opportunity to use this weighted base as actually a way to increase my portability when it comes to making videos. So sometimes I don't want to be sat in my office all day. Sometimes I'll I'll go into my bedroom if I'm recording like a vlog type video or we're getting serious and we're having some sims discussions then I like to record in my bedroom just want to point out that this is not a ghost my lighting isn't being affected I'm actually in the other room in my office changing the lighting on my pc because my pc is connected to my key light through wi-fi so just in case you thought I was being haunted this Halloween. Sometimes I'll want to do like cooking videos or recreating Sims 4 content in my kitchen. And so I thought this would be a great opportunity to actually take my Elgato key light, which is a completely separate product. So with the key light and my multi-mount, 
do my screen i'd have to work around it and it just wasn't great so i'm glad that i Call finally had the, the glow up that i needed and day, i no baby. longer have to worry no, about my camera falling off the top of my monitor because it was a real worry for a good few years and of course this wouldn't be an informational video if i didn't give you guys the prices of everything you have seen throughout this video so these are all in pounds because obviously i am the English simmer. So the multi mount itself is forty nine ninety nine. Well, then the, the multi mount the flex arm kit is thirty nine ninety nine. Uh, did I get raided and because the uh, there was a swirl of emos? No raid. That was there a Sizz Redeem in the uh, sex time holder, which is fourteen ninety nine. I actually don't have that because no raid, I don't no really raid. like creating no content using my phone. Yes, it is a Pixel and it's got a pretty good camera, but that's why I have cameras and DSLRs so I don't ever really use my phone to create content but that is an option if you guys also want it. So that's where I'm gonna wrap this video up. Thank you guys so much for tuning well, in. Well okay hopefully let me watch one more What is up guys Alex you here have the Elgato multi because I play the quick on um, the bring a manual I the extension they give him take the box put it to the side so then okay so basically what you have to do right to mount it on the table is you um, my homie Dr. Taz the finding Bigfoot page which it page. makes this part open that's the right? third big love of the day unscrewed I just want to see how deep that much. is please show me you put it on a table right there it's on a table right here and then you screw it back up so it fits and boom and it's really stable it won't like fall off unless the part up here that goes up you have at this point and then you just put the light there on like a regular thing so you guys can see yeah there uh. so this is how long it gets you guys can see right here and there's a flexible one that can get um i already seen this video uh up at the top sis. if you want okay, i, I you know, know i know what ninja's using in his room i've been i've seen that video when it first came out your video but yeah other than that this is perfect for streaming yeah, this, this, vid this video is super old video. for me it's not a this is one of my this is one of my favorite price, game rooms 40 bucks, um, uh next to nick Merckx. this was around 25 bucks but you so know what one thing i will uh one thing i want to watch you do have to have a table of some sort to a uh, thing and it has to be in the size like this so like all the way down here so it fits if it doesn't if it's bigger than that if it's I haven't seen this video, so I want to see this one. Yeah, that looks good. Ladies and gentlemen, we have finally unveiled the 100 Thieves Cash App Compound, the center of the universe for all things 100 Thieves. But John Robinson, president and COO, do you know what the center of that is? We're going to win championships. No. Our amazing apparel. No. Incredible new content. No, let me help you out. The center of that is me, Nate Shot. Guys, I have now been creating content for almost 10 years. You followed me from my bedroom in Chicago all the way into my first apartment and then into 6050 and then to LA. And now we are about to take content creation. You can do a vid, but not that level. tech. What's that, that mean? That's why I'm so proud to welcome you. Whoa, one sec, one sec. That is why I'm so proud to welcome you to Nate Shot Studio. Now get back to work. <laughs> Fuck, I really racked my knee on that wall. God damn it. That's gonna be a mark. This is low key hard. Now, first off, I wanna introduce you to Blade. This is my own personal security guard. We met in a bar fight in Boston. I saw he needed some help. I jumped in. I saved his life. Now he's my full-time security guard. True story. Now hold on. I want to show you something. John Robinson, I need to see you in my office. John Robinson, to Nate Shop Studio, please. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, I have, a, I have a meeting with Matt. 
Matt's currently indisposed. But he, he just called me into his office. I didn't hear it. Uh, <laughs> uh, do I know uh, the Sidemen? A little bit, nothing too much about them, though. All jokes aside, guys, welcome to Nate Shot Studio. I'm so excited to jump in to all the things that we designed for this room specifically. Obviously, I'm a content creator at heart, but I'm also the CEO of 100 Thieves. We meticulously designed everything to be in its own specific place so I can maximize product. Maybe I should really hang be the best Nate shot and be the best Matthew Haig that I've ever been. In Maybe my I should hang life. that shit so upside down. Heart of this on office, my we have two NDXT 100 Thieves Nate shot PCs that have all the power, everything that I need to game at the highest level. We have three 240 hertz monitors, and above we have two light panels, two microphones, two cameras, so that anywhere in this room we can actually set up a shot on stream. Whether it's me interacting with our employees if we have a meeting, or if it's me just hanging out and streaming, it has so much functionality and so much variety with what we can do with this space. Now obviously finding a balance between content creation and streaming versus being the CEO of 100 Thieves has been somewhat difficult. Uh, can I give you the last bit after this? this it's, you're gonna have to save it, sis, because I'm, I'm gonna play video games everybody after Everybody in the maybe. office. You're gonna have to save so it. So we have the entire bullpen, which I'll be able to actually pull up on stream for when I have to be right back. But I also have two specialty cameras for John and Logan's desk. And look at that, Logan Dodson. The explosion man himself, hard at work on one of my vlogs. This is great because I get updates, ETAs with my video going up. We get to talk about thumbnails and titles all from this seat right here. On top of that, we've got the PlayStation down below. We've got the PA system in case I need to make any announcements to the entire company. And then some of my favorite parts of this room is it's really like a walk through history of my career. First and foremost, we have the original Nade Shot jersey when 100 Thieves first started. Some of you guys say it's your favorite jersey ever created, and that makes me ridiculously proud. On top of that, down below, where everything really began for me is my 2011 Call of Duty XP trophy. Big shout out to Hector Rodriguez for storing that for so long, hanging onto it and shipping it to me. Me being a little ass kid probably would have never held onto that, and I'm so glad that he did. On the right side, another huge milestone for me was hitting 1 million subscribers. And obviously it still says Optic Nate Shot, but this plaque means the world to me. And so to have it here at the 100 Thieves Cash App compound right next to me and be able to look at it every single day is always added motivation to continue to evolve and continue to work harder than ever before. We have the eSports no says save it. personality of the year from 2019. Really proud and honored to have been. You know your love will be okay. And we have the all black cause that Haley actually got for me for Christmas. And then as we move back to this side, we have the self-made statue that Hector gifted when he came on the podcast. We've got the 100 Thieves custom design sneakers over here to my left. One of my proudest achievements yet here at this company. And then up top, we have a TV and a sound bar in case I need to throw up any presentations or Excel sheets, which probably will never happen. I'm gonna use this for NBA games and movies and TV shows. And then down below, we have any type of alcohol you might need. Listen, we're here to have fun. Of course, I'm gonna be doing a lot of late night streaming. And so we wanna be able to relax and enjoy the spirits that the earth- Bahama mama hits. And then finally, to the left of the TV, we have my X Games gold medal. Probably my favorite tournament that we've ever competed in. We were underdogs, and I don't think anyone believed that we could win that tournament. And now I have it here etched in history on my wall here at the 100 Thieves Cash App compound. And then if you look above the door, you guys know I, I, I'm a sports fanatic. I watch more NBA than any other sport, but now I have my own personal basketball hoop in my studio. Obviously, a lot of important business matters to discuss, but we can't do work well unless we're having fun. So that's why we're gonna play a four-man game of knockout right now. Well, get in line, get in line. Where's the line? I'm starting, I'm starting. I'm gonna use my height to my advantage. Just cause you're not six feet, oh, fuck. doesn't mean it. You can't dunk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I started over, that's not happening in the video. No. I, I forgot I could lay it up. No, you're up and then you're up. Go. Oh shit, go. Cash. This is scum. I hear somebody had me breathing. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> 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 Guys, please watch the gold medal. Somebody already scuffed the wall. All right, end it, end it. Oh! Wow! Uh, I don't think I 
John Rob, Maybe we'll save Knockout for the next iteration of Nate Shot Studio in a couple years. All right, we'll see you later. I don't know why, but I legitimately completely forgot that I could just go up there and, and lay it in and just dunk it. I thought, I don't know why. I mean, regardless of that, I was shooting and still missing, but I could have just done that. Now, finally, in theme with that, if you look above, we have a signed Lonzo Ball and signed Devin Booker jersey that was gifted to me. And we left space open on the rest of the studio so that I can keep adding to my collection. Overall, I have everything I need to be Matthew Haig. I have everything I need to be Nate Shot and just really take my career to the next level and start bringing you guys content that you have never seen before. And lastly, one of my favorite parts about this studio are the glass panes and I'm right next to the back door. So whenever our employees come inside or they're working at their bullpen, I can see them, I can say hello and really just be a part of this company living and breathing every single day. Now you guys know that I love this studio, but the biggest issue when designing it that I did not foresee is that I'd never want to leave. But there still are meetings and responsibilities that I have that I need to be a part of. But John and Jason are in the boardroom and they just told me that there's some really good news. So we're gonna head over there right now. days I cannot be bothered to use my leg, but there's good news afoot at Under Thieves. That's usually a sign that it's important and as a response. What I would kill, know, what I would kill to have one of I those just riding me. it around my house. I wonder what they have to say. Uh-oh. Ooh, I'm getting nice with this thing. John! Jason! I made it! Hey, man. Hey. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming to this meeting. Um, what's the good news? Well, so as, as you know, it's, it's an HR meeting. Um, here, let me close the door real quick. Wait, it's an HR meeting? Oh, fuck. No! No, 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 we need to talk about Frosty and the, and the tax issues. I'm not talking about the mob. I'm not talking about HR violations. <laughs> Matt, you're, you're a CEO of this company. We have, we have serious HR policy issues that we need to talk about. To open the door, John. Fine. I'm out. Get me out. Get me the fuck out of here. Back to real work. What okay. they're doing is Get boring. Get me the fuck out of here. It's going to change the game. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my official studio tour. I'm so proud of what we created, and I can't wait for you guys to be there every step of the way with every stream, with every video, and with every day we live here at the 100 Thieves Cash App Compound. Now, I got to be honest with you. You don't have to leave, but you can't stay here. Me and Blade, one of our favorite movies of all time, are about to watch National Treasure. We got Chad, Anna, and Alex joining us for the flick. So you guys got to go, because I'm about to turn up the volume. Turn it up. We'll see you later. It's time to leave. Leave a like on the video, please. I got to keep the lights on. Come on. I'm about to start saying that. Leave a like on the video, because I got to keep the lights on. Was, was a lit session with the boys. But uh, now I'm in a game. Uh. Really want my uh, really want my switch to do its thing here. Ay ay ay. Okay. Well, uh, let me uh, let let me fix my switch.
I haven't been this hungry in decades, bro. I feel like I haven't eaten nothing in years. Dr. Taz, we're demon tech time. That's why we're here. We might as well do it. I don't even know why I opened the window. I don't have to. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm KBHD here. We're back. And yeah, you got me. I've been using the OnePlus 8 Pro daily for about two weeks now. And I gotta say, they did it. They finally did it. They just went ahead and made a flagship, like a bona fide, complete feeling flagship phone, finally. Now there are still a few snags and I will nitpick about those because that's what you do in a phone that starts now at 900 bucks. But still, nevertheless, Really happy to see them finally commit to something like this, and it's been a long time coming. So today, as you may have seen, OnePlus launched their newest, highest-end phone. It's the OnePlus 8 Pro, taking yet another step up in the ladder of their phones getting slightly more expensive every year. But alongside it, they also dropped the OnePlus 8, which is sort of more like a premium mid-range phone that starts at $699. So that, that will be its own separate video that'll come out later once I fully daily drive this phone, switch to it, give it that treatment. Um, that's going to be a tough video to make without all kinds of reflections, but definitely subscribe to see that video first when it comes out. Hit the red button below if you haven't already. That's coming up. But until then, we're talking about this guy, the 8 Pro, the flagship. So the bleeding edge high-end specs shouldn't be a surprise when we see a new OnePlus phone. I mean, beside the fact that they slowly tease out all the specs the weeks leading up to the phone's launch, it's kind of what they're known for, you know, placing what feels like the highest end, best available specs for the highest end performance all in one phone. And we still have a very familiar OnePlus design and experience here too. They still have their logo on the back and still things like the alert slider that I'm surprised more phones haven't copied yet. Still Oxygen OS, one of my favorite clean Android skins with all of its features. But wait, stop, pause. What have the nitpicks always been with OnePlus phones? One is that their cameras are always just not quite measuring up to the flagships. And two, that they always tend to leave out these sort of fringe features that don't feel essential, but still feel like you should have them if you're gonna claim that you're a flagship. Things like wireless charging and IP68 certification. Well, guess what they finally went and added this year? An improved camera, wireless charging, and an official IP68 water and dust resistance rating, finally. But you know what, let me start from the top with the new design for the OnePlus 8 Pro. You can see it here, I really like a lot of it. Uh, the new matte finish and this blue color are pretty sick. I don't have a lot of matte blue phones, but this one is nice, it's punchy and clean, so it's easily my favorite blue phone. And this finish is nice, it doesn't really show too many fingerprints. Of course, you can also grab this ultra matte teardown skin from our channel sponsor, D-Brand, which also feels great. And you can see the wireless charging coil in the back. Plus it's also got a few Easter eggs hidden in the design, which are pretty dope. But anyway, yeah, the shape of the phone is boxy, which I've always really liked. Plus there's this new little design down, accent yeah. ridge into the top of the phone. So generally I think it's one of the absolute better looking phones out there. But I still get to nitpick because like I said, $900 phone, that's what's gonna happen. And this camera bump, while it's not as ugly as some of the others out there, it still is pretty big. Like it's annoyingly rocks on a table big for sticking out of the phone that much. So I got to point that out. Um, but again, you can put a case on it and get rid of that. Then you get around to the front and you're looking at the new display, which is an upgrade to pretty much all of the ways that count, but also technically, technically a slight downgrade too. So no, this is I don't a like 6.7 I want a red Samsung phone so bad. 120 hertz AMOLED display. And it's really, really good. OnePlus and DisplayMate say it's their most color accurate display ever, you know, the best A plus they've ever given, et cetera, et cetera. They're kind of starting to sound a lot like DxO Mark at this point. Look, I believe you, the color's great, the calibration's great, but what I notice more often is, number one, it's definitely a lot brighter than last year, which is sweet. No, I and then of course, the flagship feature for 2020 for all these new flagships, which is the smooth Where could I get 120 one hertz refresh rate plus 240 hertz touch sampling rate. What's the price we're talking? And it is awesome. I've been looking forward to this. A couple specifics on it. One, yes, it does let you run both high refresh rate and high resolution at the same time. And that's exactly what I've been doing. 1440p at 120 hertz at the expense of battery, but you know, live your life. 
then yes, it is technically a variable refresh rate. So even when you have it set to 120 hertz, just like last year, it will step down to 60 hertz occasionally when you're just sitting around not doing anything, or if you're on a home screen, or if you're in some app that won't use that, like Waze or Google Maps or Snapchat or a game or something, then yes, there is still an optical fingerprint reader underneath that screen. It doesn't appear to be any bigger or faster, but still fairly reliable for me. And yes, the edges are still curved over both sides. And this is my least favorite feature of this display. I still get accidental touches. <laughs> like, really, I, I realize the idea is it looks cool and it's edgeless and futuristic, but I think it's time to slow that down. And I think Samsung's perfected that balance this year between curving the glass a little bit and still having a flat working surface with no accidental touches, so just saying. And also by now, from all these beauty angles of the screen, certainly you've noticed that hole punch camera in the top left corner for the selfie shooter for the OnePlus 8 Pro. Hot take, the pop-up camera was, <laughs> the pop-up camera was better than the hole punch, and this is a downgrade. Like I get that the pop-up camera was a moving part. I was the first to point that out, a moving part in a phone is always a part to pay attention to. But we haven't had any durability problems with them for the past two years we've seen them in phones. And of course, having that part hidden inside yeah, well, allows you a the fully uninterrupted so screen with, with no hole punch. And when it closes down into the phone and you're not using it, it's blocked by the rest of the phone. So that's an added security benefit. So it seems like the pop-up camera was the way to go. So why did they remove the pop-up camera and change back to a hole punch? I don't know. Maybe to look a little bit more like the other flagships. Maybe to save a little bit of money. Maybe maybe to guarantee the IP68 water certification. Maybe just a little bit of all these things. Also, side note, I would like to see some of these phones offering 120 hertz screens also offer a 90 hertz mode in between 60 and 120. So we already know we can step can down to 1080p to save battery life. I think it would be nice to be able to step down to 90 hertz My mission to is to buy battery you guys too. better internet. Just a, an idea. Some of the gaming phones have done this already, but I, I want to see more flagships doing it too. So there's a free idea. So all of the OnePlus 8's internal specs are high end. Top end, you know, Snapdragon 865, 8 or 12 gigs of fast LPDDR5 RAM. It's that super fast UFS 3.0 storage. And the battery also gets an upgrade because on top of all that, it's a 5G capable phone with 120 hertz big display. So you get a 4,510 milliamp hour battery. It's not the biggest battery in the world, but for me, it did just fine. Like I said, I've been using the phone with my high brightness, high GPS use at 1440p, 120 hertz, and I've been getting to the end of the day pretty comfortably. Thank you, my friend. I could kill this phone in a day, and I've noticed that, but if I didn't yeah, want I to, it I if would step down to right. 1080p. And I would save a lot of pixel pushing and a lot of battery and that's a nice backup to have. Generally for me, I'm talking about like a six hour screen on time for this phone, six and a half hours. If you wanna reference back to other videos, that's really good. Uh, but also something to note is for me, the charging habits of your phone can change what you think of the battery. And OnePlus phones are known for having fast charging. This one's no exception. You still have their high speed Warp Charge 30T, comes in the box. Uh, and that can get you from zero to half battery in like 25 minutes. But what's new to this phone is wireless charging. Finally, OnePlus is putting the little charging coil behind the glass back and enabling wireless charging. And on top of all that, even better, it's fast wireless charging. So 30 watt wireless charging is what they're claiming and, and sharing with everyone, which is really nice. That's fast. That's gonna top up from zero to half battery in half an hour, but there's a catch. You only get fast 30 watt wireless charging with this phone with this exact brand new $70 OnePlus wireless charging. All right, I'm charged stand. up, I'm refueled. You need this accessory to get 30 watts wireless charging on this phone. And that's because it is not 30 watts of purely Qi wireless charging. So OnePlus has worked on this special high-end wireless charging tech. And to be fair, it works exactly as advertised. The stand is nice. It has uh, some little quiet fans in there and it does some special voltage and thermal management to get the peak 30 watts wireless charging out of it. But if you put another Qi enabled phone on that wireless charger, it charges slower. And if you put the OnePlus 8 Pro on any other Qi wireless charger, it charges slower because that tech was proprietary. So the OnePlus 8 Pro still supports regular you Qi wireless charging, video? but only universally at five watts which is pretty slow. It's not, it's, I mean, it works, 
it's like it's pretty slow so for me I'm not gonna replace the you can't see it but I'm not gonna replace the wireless charger well, at my the desk the with the one plus one because I have other chi accessories like my airpods pro or my iPhone or literally any other chi phone that I want to charge faster wirelessly um, so I'm just gonna stick to wired warp charging in the car and pretty much everywhere I need it but at home I have a pixel stand at my desk and I can just leave it there to slowly top up overnight and wake up with 100%. So I'm, I'm glad to have wireless charging, but that, there is that little snag. So then there are the cameras, quad cameras on the back of this phone. And here are the numbers, which maybe mean less than ever oh these God, days, but it's a new video. 48 megapixel main camera with OIS. Me then up, there's man. a 48 megapixel oh, ultra wide with macro mode, which fun fact is the same sensor as the primary camera from the OnePlus 7 Pro. Then there's the 3X telephoto camera, and believe it or not, the fourth one is a five megapixel color filter camera. So that's your array. And I'll just go ahead and say it, the OnePlus 8 Pro is a flagship quality camera right in line with Galaxy S20 and Huawei P40, and just short of the Pixel and the iPhone. There, I said it. It's spitting out sharp 12 megapixel images with nice dynamic range and colors. A bit overexposed sometimes, that's where it misses, but generally, these are nice photos. Also, sorry in advance for slightly less outdoor photos. Uh, the whole shelter in place quarantine thing clearly means I also have less people subjects. But yeah, you can tell this is an, a confident, nice camera. No autofocus issues at all, especially when you give it some light and even sometimes when you don't. It's nice. You're going to have to I save like that uh, tech time. You are time still going to get more fringing with close up subjects. Your boy wants to play some I take ball, a lot dude. of close up subject photos, and that's the downside of a big 1 over 1 1.4 inch sensor. But again, that just seems like par for the course for flagship cameras right now. Big sensor, usually sharp photos, but get some fringing when your photos are close-up subjects. The night mode is pretty good, which is nice. Max zoom is 30x from that telephoto camera. I don't think it's very usable at 30x. It's barely passable. Galaxy S20 Ultra is still going to be the zoom champ for that sort of range. But hey, 10x is fine, and 3x is definitely usable. Um, and I have pretty much no use for that <laughs> color filter camera. Uh, the selfie camera, you guys have asked for it. I, I usually don't get too into the selfie camera in smartphones, but I'll do it. I'll start taking selfies now. It's part of the job. Ah, uh, bless me. Wowzer. All right, Dr. Taylor, let me look at this video. Because you guys be begging me to look at these videos, man.